There were giants that were more deadly than the Nephilim giants, and in this video, we will take a special look at these giants. The Eliaud, sometimes spelled as Eljo, are ancient descendants of the Nephilim, often seen as a unique hybrid race with both angelic and human traits in the books of Enoch and Jubilees. These texts, preserved by various groups including the Qumran religious community responsible for the Dead Sea Scrolls, detail the remarkable and malevolent nature of the Eliaud, akin to the Nephilim. In collaboration with other fallen angels, they selected human brides and engaged in relationships marked by immoral conduct. They shared magical knowledge, spells, and expertise in herbal medicine with these women. As a result, these women became pregnant and gave birth to massive beings referred to as giants. These giants, in turn, intermingled with humans and gave rise to a lineage known as the Nephilim. Among the Nephilim were also individuals identified as Eliaud. This race of giants and their descendants continued to proliferate, their size defying belief. It is worth noting that the term Eliaud is not considered authoritative by modern Rabbinic Judaism, Western Christianity, or Eastern Orthodoxy. However, Beta Israel Jews and certain Ethiopian Orthodox Christians do acknowledge its significance. Enoch, the presumed author of the revelations concerning the Eliaud, is briefly mentioned in the canonical book of Genesis as a lengthy forefather of Noah. Although the Genesis account acknowledges the Nephilim's offspring, it refrains from specifying their names. While these mentions of giants may seem to originally pertain to the Philistines rather than the Eliaud, there is another biblical account, set in Gath, concerning a giant and his potential descendants, possibly the Anakim. This narrative is sometimes associated with the Eliaud, who are described in this version as possessing six fingers on each hand and foot. Early leaders of the Christian Church during the 1st and 2nd centuries, along with the groups responsible for establishing the Rabbinical Jewish Canon, were familiar with the content of 1 Enoch and the Book of Jubilees, which included these stories. Initially, they acknowledged the authority of 1 Enoch as scripture. However, by the 4th century AD, influenced by a belief that angels were incapable of engaging in sexual activities, both Western Christianity and Rabbinical Judaism made the decision to exclude these texts from their official canons. A less literal interpretation of Genesis 6 verse 4 suggests a union between the sons of God, understood as the righteous descendants of Seth or those devoted to God, and the daughters of men, representing the ungodly descendants of Cain or those who do not share a faithful disposition. In contrast to 1 Enoch and the Book of Jubilees, the pseudepigraphic second section of the Book of Adam and Eve adopts this more symbolic interpretation. The possibility of less literal interpretations for the term, sons of God, is challenged by the language used in 1 Enoch, which explicitly refers to the Eliaud race. An alternative reading might involve identifying specific angels who chose to procreate with human women. Certain interpretations of non-canonical texts suggest that the gibberim, often referred to as giants, mentioned in the accepted book of Numbers, are in fact offspring of unions between angels and humans. These offspring are identified as the Nephilim. In alternate scenarios, gibberim are born from relationships between angels and human mothers, while Nephilim result from unions between human mothers and gibberim fathers. A similar ambiguity is found in the non-canonical Book of Giants, fragments of which were uncovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls. For instance, a perceived inconsistency emerges in the translations of 1 Enoch 7 verse 2 and 7 verse 10 to 11 across Aramaic, Guizi, Ethiopian, and Greek sources. The passage describes how angels, referred to as the sons of heaven, became infatuated with human women and resolved to take them as wives to bear children. In the text known as, Watchers, found within an Aramaic manuscript by J. T. Millick titled, Aramaic Fragments of Qumran Cave 4, it elaborates that the angels selected wives, engaged in relationships, and shared teachings encompassing magic, incantations, and the properties of plants and trees. Subsequently, 
these women gave birth to giants. Divergences between the Greek manuscripts and the original Ethiopian version become notable at this point. In the Greek texts, a distinction is made, stating that the Watchers had three races of offspring. The initial race consisted of great giants, a detail added in a Greek manuscript. Some accounts suggest that the giant slew the Nephilim, while other versions claim that the Nephilim themselves slew the Eliaud. These beings continued to grow in power, commensurate with their colossal stature. Jubilee 7 verse 21 to 25 presents the following account, due to a convergence of three factors, specifically the transgressions committed by the Watchers against the established laws and ordinances, as they engaged in illicit relations with mortal women and married whomever they chose, impurity made its initial appearance on earth. In R.H. Charles's translation from 1913, it's noteworthy that Nafil is used as an alternative transliteration for Nephilim. From these unions, Nafidim were born, each distinct from the others, engaging in self-destruction. The giants slew the Nafil, the Nafil slew the Eljo, and the Eljo turned against humankind, leading to humans preying upon one another. People then willingly indulged in sinful behavior, causing widespread bloodshed and spreading injustice throughout the world. This sinful trajectory extended to all living creatures, animals, plants, birds, and every moving creature on land. Consequently, copious blood was spilled, and human desires became entwined with vanity and malevolence. The Lord responded to their wickedness and the blood they shed by purging the earth of all that existed due to their corrupt actions. While fragments of the non-canonical Book of Giants, discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls, possibly allude to the Eliaud, a clear interpretation remains elusive due to the absence of a complete modern version and the fact that available fragments are spread across six archaic languages. The Giants voraciously consumed resources produced by ordinary people, leading to insurmountable demands. They escalated to killing and devouring humans, extending their harm to birds, animals, insects, and fish. Their descent into cannibalism and blood drinking marked a severe nadir. Earth itself opposed these lawless giants, accusing them of their maleficence. Observing from the sacred realm of heaven, Michael, Sariel, Raphael, and Gabriel witnessed an alarming proliferation of bloodshed and violence across the earth. The land became saturated with irreligion and iniquity. In response, they convened and communicated amongst themselves, acknowledging the earth's cry of suffering reaching the heavenly gates. The souls of humanity implored the celestial beings, entreating them to present their case before the Most High. They sought to lay bare their devastation, appealing for divine judgment and imploring the Lord of all lords to witness their plight. Drawing near to the Eternal Lord, they addressed Him with reverence, proclaiming, You are the Supreme Deity, surpassing all gods, sovereign over rulers, the monarch of monarchs, and the God reigning across ages. Your majestic throne spans countless generations. Your name, sacred, exalted, and blessed, echoes through endless time. Creator of all, you wield dominion over every realm. Nothing remains concealed from your gaze, as all stands revealed in your sight. Your vision encompasses all, no secret eluding your knowledge. Your scrutiny has witnessed Asael's deeds, unveiling wickedness upon the earthly plane. He has unveiled heaven's eternal mysteries, coveted by humankind for comprehension. Moreover, Shemahaza, entrusted with leadership among his companions, has committed grievous offenses. They have intertwined with mortal women, sullying themselves in these liaisons. They have disseminated teachings of diverse sins and imparted the knowledge of dark incantations. Consequently, human daughters have borne hybrid progeny, giants of mingled lineage. Moreover, the earth is marred by the widespread spilling of human blood, wickedness pervading the globe. The departed spirits of men now raise their plaintive cries, their lamentations resounding at heaven's threshold. 
Their appeals persistently emerge due to the unceasing grip of such far-reaching corruption upon the world. You, O Lord, encompass foreknowledge of all events, watching their unfolding, though the course of action to undertake in response to these events remains concealed from us. Thereupon, the Supreme High, the Great Holiness, issued a proclamation and spoke forth. Serial was dispatched to Lamech's son, entrusted with a divine message. Serial was charged to approach Noah and relay these words in the Most High's name, Seek refuge and veil yourself. I unveil the imminence of the end, a cataclysm poised to engulf the entire earth. A deluge of monumental proportions is on the horizon, poised to sweep away all that exists. Guide the righteous one in navigating the impending crisis. Instruct Lamech's offspring in the means to safeguard his existence, escaping the impending calamity, and securing his perpetuity. From the righteous lineage of Noah, a new generation shall emerge, and his posterity shall endure in the unfolding ages. Turning to Raphael, the Almighty issued a directive, instructing, Raphael, go forth and bind Asael securely, confining him by his hands and feet. Cast him into a shadowed abyss, forming a desolate chasm amidst the wilderness, a place known as Daudiel. Therein, let him be cast, onto rugged and piercing stones below. Enshroud him in obscurity, granting him a prolonged sojourn. Let his visage remain veiled from the light's embrace. On the day of the ultimate reckoning, Asael shall be led to a consuming inferno, confronting the retribution for his deeds. Furthermore, tend to the restoration of the earth, which has suffered from the transgressions of the fallen angels, the watchers. Proclaim the renewal and revival of the earth, that the affliction stemming from the watchers' teachings may be remedied. In this endeavor, ensure that the progeny of humankind are not subjected to annihilation due to the enigmatic knowledge propagated by the watchers. The desolation wrought by Asael's teachings has left a trail of devastation upon the land. Thus, inscribe upon him the full weight of his iniquities, a testament to the repercussions of his choices. Thank you for watching.